Okay, recording in progress. Once again, uh, greetings to Sulmaz, Mariam, Marisa, Tony, Nancy, uh, Mohanna, Sara, Mahsa, Sophie, Saeed Bayad, Faz Khatami, Negin Turabi, and Ghazal Bayad. These are the people uh, who are with us now who've made it through uh, the filtering of Zoom. Uh, and are with us. So just uh, for the sake of uh, actually others who haven't joined yet, we will wait for one more minute and we will get started anyway. So I hope you're all doing well. It's a Friday. I'm not sure if you have any plans for the weekend. Uh, but part of this um, is this professional development program uh, assessment, which is a fundamental part of uh, education. Um, just sleeping. Sherzy says sleeping. Sherzy, why are you sleeping? <laughs> it's our only plan for Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah, your plan for Friday, yeah. Fafa, good morning to you. There is a volleyball game on 12, at 12.30. Yeah, hopefully we will finish by then. I, I am aware, Solmaz, and I'm going to watch it. Iran versus... And Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. And Iran is doing pretty well. Yeah, pretty well. Just Guys, Rominar, Rominar Ruhifar is asking for the link, mm. for the it's... Zoom link. It's in Here's WhatsApp. The, sorry? I will send. I will send her. Here's the kindly, yeah, send it to um, Romina Ruifar, Riley. You will be recording this uh, meeting and will you be sharing this uh, PowerPoint? Uh, of course I can, yeah. I don't mm, see any problems, you. Solmaz. Yeah. Okay, let's get started, everyone. Once again, greetings to everyone everywhere. Um, uh, so this is part of our uh, dedication to professional development at IZ. Um, an assessment as a uh, fundamental component of uh, education, teaching and learning. I, I just realized uh, one thing that we need to um, have a meeting on is assessment because it's been a while. We haven't talked about our assessment policies in Iran Zamin. And part of this uh, presentation I'm delivering now um, is from Professor Farhadi, um, who is well known to a lot of you, I, I, I hope especially those who are doing um, academic studies in the area of testing and assessment. I'm sure that they are well familiar with uh, Professor Farhadi. And I think if I'm not mistaken, Anastasia must have been there when Professor Farhadi was talking at uh, the sixth ELT conference at Allah University in Tehran a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Guys, I think some people are still having problems. And it's okay. I mean, we will have to just get started. Uh, okay. Let me just mute my phone. And yeah, some people are just joining. Riley and Fatima Rostami, I think, are joining. Okay. Now, the... This is the structure of my presentation today. Um, yeah, Anastasia, you were there, which is great. So you can just, I mean, unmute yourself and, and talk anytime you wish. You can add something. So firstly, I'm going to give you a couple of questions to get started. After that, we are going to have a look at the theory of learning and assessment, and this part is mostly from Professor Farhadi. 
followed by that, we are going to look at the distinction of assessment and testing and see which one we are embracing more at Iran Zamin and which one we should embrace more. Should we go more towards testing or should we go more towards assessment? If we have time, and I'm aware of the volleyball game between Iran and Germany, and by no means I'm going to ruin your Friday and that fun part. So if we have time, we are going to look at assessment types. If, if not, we can always uh, put it off to a later time because that might require a whole different presentation. Okay, now let me just share my questions with you. You must see four questions on your screen and we have one minute to respond to the questions. You can get started any time. But the poll will end in one minute. So be aware of time. Do you see the questions? Yes, yes, I answered all. You answered all. Marisa says, I can't see your screen. Marisa, I'm sorry, but I, I have to tell you that actually the problem is with your device because if one person can see my screen, it means that there are no problems at my end. And yeah, I, can I think uh, with, with the cell phone, the questions I, won't I, I can Yeah, continue. with the cell phone, maybe then you will have a problem if you are using a cell phone. And I have, that, sorry, Mark, I have this problem. I can see. You can't oh. see my screen. So there is no problem with the cell phone. Nancy, I'm sorry, but the problem is not with me, with my end. The problem is definitely with your end because so far, seven people okay. have answered the questions. Seven people. Marisa, Marisa says, could you read I know, them? It refers to mine. Yes, yeah. Marisa. Okay. Marisa, my first question is based on the philosophy of education at IZ. Which one should we use more, testing or assessment? Question two is, as a student, I usually received more Testing or assessment, okay? Question three is, as a teacher, I usually use testing or assessment. This is the third question. And the fourth question is, assessment is about all below, except feedback, fixing teaching methods, diagnosis, separating the students in class. Okay, I think time is up. And now let me just share the results with everyone. If you check the results, uh, so 10 people were able to answer the questions, which is good, uh, because I think we have 17 parts. So including myself, we are 17. So we have 16 participants. Unfortunately, six of them couldn't answer the questions. Probably it's because of the device they're using. So question one, Based on philosophy of education at IZ, which one should we be, should be used more, testing or assessment? Nine out of 10 said assessment and thumbs up. Yes, absolutely right. And we will see why we should use more assessment than testing. Question two says, as a student, I usually received more. Yes, this is again right, because especially uh, in my generation, there was more, much more testing. Maybe um, as we go closer to recent times, we have maybe we have more assessment in schools and universities. But as you go backwards, you get more and more of uh, you get more and more of what? More and more of testing. As a teacher. I'm so happy to see that eight people out of 10 have said they use assessment more, more than testing. And only two people have said they use testing more than assessment, which is again, great news for me. And question four, assessment is all about below, except nine people are right, nine out of 10. You are a very smart group and my job is very easy today with you guys. So absolutely great. But there's that one person 
uh, who I can understand. And sometimes this could be a technological issue. I mean, sometimes I have people who push the wrong button, you know, they didn't mean to say feedback, but they pushed the wrong button, I can understand. But if someone really thought that feedback is not part of assessment, feedback is an essential part of assessment. So thank you so much, everyone, for taking this poll. Let's close the poll and get into the body of my presentation. So as you can see on this screen, nothing that we do or for, uh, nothing that we we do to or for our students is more important than our assessment of their work and the feedback we give them on it. The results of our assessment influence our students for the rest of their lives and careers. Fine if we get it right, but unthinkable if we get it wrong. This is from Ray Brown and Smith, 2005, and this is absolutely right. And actually this tells us why this topic is really significant. So depending on what we are teaching, where we are teaching and who the audience is and what kind of decision we are making, a wrong assessment or wrong series of assessment or evaluation can have detrimental impact on our students. And we can also imagine a, a right system of evaluation or assessment can really help our students in really positive ways. So sometimes when we talk about failing students, passing students and such issues, uh, many times I have stressed that we've got to be very careful because it's not just failing a course, it might have uh, much broader implications in people's lives. So we gotta be very careful when we are failing the student or even when we are passing a student with flying colors when they don't deserve. So right assessment, just assessment, fair assessment uh, will be uh, really, really instrumental and helpful, but the wrong one can be very detrimental. And you can't go about assessment saying that it's not gonna affect my student's life. You never know, you never know because uh, the most distinguished professors in the world were at some stage students of some teachers, you know. For example, Dr. Sami E, one like scholar, Iranian scholar who we are proud of. We can imagine that he was a student in somebody's class studying biology, studying math. Uh, I don't know, a lot of people, a lot of artists, a lot of sports people, a lot of uh, English professors, and I always use my own example. When I was a teenager, my English was absolute trash. And um, by some harsh assessment and judgment, my future would be totally different than what it is now. So we gotta be very careful with what we are doing, okay? okay like I said, um, the next few slides that I'm gonna share with you, I have borrowed from Professor Farhadi's talk. And Anastasia was there at the sixth ELT conference at Alama Tabatawa University. Uh, <clears throat> so like I said, um, the complexity of um, assessment and the decisions we make and the evaluations that we carry out is because there are certain processes um, happening and assessment or evaluation is not just one thing. So we teach, as teachers we teach. And when we teach, there are many, many criteria. Our proficiency, English proficiency, our subject knowledge, even our mood, Throughout a course, maybe in that course, we were heavily impacted by a negative event in our lives or a positive one or whatever. So there are many variables in me as a teacher. And there are many variables in the material I'm teaching. And then when we teach, we accept that someone will learn. And we need evidence for this one, because when we teach, 
you can't say this has been successful or unsuccessful unless you get some evidence from your students. And this evidence should come from some sort of testing or evaluation or assessment. And based on this decision, based on the results, we make decisions and the decisions have lifelong sometimes impacts on students' lives. So don't go about evaluating your students saying that, come on, it's just an English class. How is this going to affect my students' lives? It definitely will. More often than not, your evaluation of your students, even at the age of, I don't know, six, seven, uh, in a, I don't know, young level class, will have its negative or positive implications or, or contributions in that person's future, even if that person is a, a house husband or a housewife, you know? So, um, and of course, the other extreme, you, you have seen the other ex extreme, some people are so proud of themselves, they say, Professor Sami was my student at some stage, and then uh, it appears that Professor Sami, yes, was their student, but in a class which is not related to his success. But I'm going to take the former, uh, actually, uh, argument and say any, any session, any hour that you teach someone, you can claim that it has implications in that person's future life, regardless of what they do. Uh, so the decision you make about some, somebody's progress Will, will determine their lives. Okay, this is about the importance of assessment and evaluation. And I remember uh, Dr. Birjandi, um, and he's, a, you know, he's a close friend of Professor Farhadi and the same level of academic, um, actually, success and fame. He used to say, God can only assess. Uh, anything not it's not our job to assess and evaluate because we can't there are so many variables and fortunately or unfortunately i'm in that state of mind and i think that the job of assessing or evaluating is a very complex one okay on this slide i'd like to draw your attention to product and process oriented Look, guys, I said, I have borrowed some of these slides from Professor Farhadi, and of course I talked to him uh, and I got the permission. So with his permission, I'm presenting. Um, on this slide, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to product and process oriented um, evaluation or teaching. And you might know that the, the more we go backwards, the more we see of product oriented education, the more modern framework of education we have, the more process oriented we are. So it's the process which is important, not the product. So this can kind of translate to assessment versus testing, because testing is more product oriented, but assessment is more uh, process oriented. Um, if you asked me, um, whose educational philosophies uh, would you um, support or would you adhere in IZ, in Iran Zami language school, and in my own teaching, the first person I would uh, mention is John Dewey. I'm not sure how much you are familiar with John Dewey. Maybe some of you are. If you are not, I highly recommend that you go and have a read of uh, his, his famous works. Look, as early as 1916, more than 100 years ago, he says education is not an affair of telling or being told, but an active and constructive process. And why is this important here for us now, John Dewey's argument for education, his uh, set state of mind? Is it's because you can't have a, a philosophy of assessment unless you have a philosophy of education. I mean, these are indispensable. These are together. The way you see education determines how you see assessment. And for John Dewey, who I follow, and I hope that Iran Zamin also is a follower of John Dewey, 
uh, knowledge is constructed. It's not given from a teacher to a student, but rather it's constructed in uh, peer work, in group work, in um, several activities that you run in your classes. So learning is a highly intellectual process that occurs when learners are involved in many cognitive and metacognitive activities to get a sense of achievement, self-confidence, and more move towards self-regulation and autonomy. Uh, so what have we got here? So in the last few decades, there have been changes in the definition of education, in the definition of teaching, and also in the definition of testing. Product-oriented normative testing system failed, and this is quote unquote from Professor Farhadi. This fa testing failed in the world because of many reasons. One reason was, was the negative washback effect of uh, testing. And can anyone unmute himself or herself and tell us very quickly what washback effect is? Does anyone know? Anastasia, anyone? No one? No volunteers? Sulmaz, Sarah, I don't know. Anyone? Riley, Mahshad, Marisa? Okay. If we have no volunteers, then I'm going to tell you very quickly. The washback effect of testing is the effect of testing on teaching. So it, the, the, the way you evaluate your students will impact the way you teach. And this is called washback effect. So let me see, I've got something in the chat box. Anastasia, the aim is to test. Yeah, yeah, washback effect, uh, the washback effect could be negative or positive. If your evaluating system, if your assessment system is the right one, this will positively help with teaching. I mean, your teaching will be the right type of teaching because you are sure of the assessment. But if or the, if it can the, be negative. Yeah, or it can be negative. negative. Some, it can be negative. Feeling, exactly. Something. And we have yeah. teaching to the test. And teaching to the test is when people come to you and say, I don't want to improve my English. I just want to ace the test. And for mm -hmm. some tests, this is possible, Solmas. For some tests, like, I don't yeah. know, maybe for Concour, maybe for uh, MSRT, or some product-oriented tests, it's possible to teach to the test. So if there are centers in the world, not just in Iran, who claim that we teach you to the test, we prepare you for the test, it, it means that the, the test has had negative impact on your teaching way. And this shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like that. Negin Torabi, you have a question? Negin Torabi, you raised your hand. If you have a question. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Hello, Hi. sir. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, can you explain it again? Look, the way you test your students, okay, this can in some ways determine how you are going to teach in the future or how your students are going to study in the future. If your test is conducted in a way that students just need to kharkhuni, they need to just, you know, study the book without doing anything and they can ace the test, they won't study during the term. Why, why bother to study throughout the term when you know if you take the test, if you ace the test, you will still be the to a top student? That's a negative washback effect. But if your assessment is kind of portfolio assessment throughout the course, that if you do not try hard throughout the course, you can't be a top student, then your assessment or your evaluation will have positive washback effect on your teaching. Okay, Negin, thank you very much for asking that question. But because of time constraints, if you still have problems, you can go to your leading teachers or you can study about washback effect and 
I'm sure that you'll be able to uh, fully understand what washback effect is. So the way we assess our students will determine how they are going to study in the future. Assess them right, they will study right. Assess them wrong, they will study wrong, okay? And then some other problems uh, with testing that uh, actually made it fail. To alleviate some of these shortcomings, the concept of assessment replaced testing. And here we have some definitions of assessment. Assessment is the measurement of a student's status by far more than paper and pencil instruments. It embraces diverse kinds of tests and measurements. So one distinction between assessment and testing is testing usually is conducted at certain times, midterm, final, that's testing. Assessment, on the other hand, can start from the very first session you meet your students and the first word they say. The very first day, your students tell you, hello, good morning. You have an understanding that, oh, they do not still know that they shouldn't use hello and good morning together. But of course, the way you give feedback is a, is a totally different thing, which I'm not going to discuss now. But this is part of assessment. Or when you see your students are not motivated, they are sitting like this, they're kind of tired, part of your assessment. The students are not motivated, okay? They are absent, part of assessment. Language assessment involves obtaining evidence to inform inferences about a person's language related knowledge, skills, or abilities. Okay, let's move on to the next page. This slide uh, shows us some distinctions and differences between testing and assessment. And like you said, my friends, and you made me very happy, in Iran Zamin, we should embrace more of assessment and less, much less of testing, okay? Because we've always been pioneers in language teaching and assessment. Testing is retrospective, assessment is prospective. Can anyone unmute himself and herself and tell us what they mean? Retrospective as opposed to prospective, anyone? Nancy is talking. I think Nancy unmuted herself. May I? Nancy? Yeah. I think the first one refers to something that comes from the past. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Nancy, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, the first one refers is belongs to the past. Very good. Yeah, that seems that goes past, back, yeah. But I don't know if it is true here is, or not. Absolutely right, Nancy. Uh, I, Sulmas? It's re yeah, it's retrospective, I guess. Re relates to things that we have from back, from the past. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, خدا تعطیل کنه اون کلاسی رو که توش assessment for learning نیست. Any assessment has to be for learning. Okay, so any assessment that you conduct, of course, we have some high state tests uh, in many countries, not, in, not just in Iran, like Konkur, and which is by nature is retrospective. I mean, it's testing what you have learned so far. Mm -hmm. But in, I mean, like to judge our own classes, how much of our assessment is prospective is determining how I should teach and how my students should study or what the weak points are, what the weak areas are and how much of my evaluation is testing. This is for you to decide. Measures what is learned, guides learning for the future, reveals the learner's existing state of knowledge, product of learning, reveals the learner's changing state of knowledge, process of learning. It's the process of learning which is more important. One or multiple attempts for testing, whereas ongoing for assessment. So at any stage in your class, 
from the beginning of the term to the end of the term, you can say, I'm, I'm conducting assessment. I'm assessing my students. Teacher controlled, it's, testing is teacher controlled, assessment is cooperative. There is often no feedback because by the nature of it, you don't have any time to give feedback if you are doing testing. You just test your students and it's done and they don't receive any feedback. And like I said, Khoda komak kone bebandim har chizi ro ke barash barash feedback nemidim. Okay? Faqat mochgiri, faqat bezar bebinam to chaqad baladi. Khob balad nist, pas ke bej migi ino ke to balad nabudi ya ino chera balad nabudi. Okay? So, this assessment as you can see is much more beneficial for the student's learning. So developments in assessment, new, new terms flourished with the word assessment, performance, authentic, alternative, formative, summative, classroom-based, dynamic, diagnostic. These are all terms, most of which came to existence after assessment gained uh, prominence. Assessment for and while learning. We need assessment for learning and assessment while learning. And they contrast with assessment of learning, which is mostly testing. So I'd say, hopefully in Iran Zamin, I can't claim that more of what we are doing now is for and while learning, but hopefully in near future, 80% of our evaluation or assessment will be for and while learning and much less of it will be of learning. All right, let's move on to other definitions of, um, or maybe we can skip this page. skip I mean, feedback Professor Farhadi. Uh, here um, he talks about many learners have been educated in a predominantly lecture-based environment. They prefer a passive role and do not trust either their teachers or their peers. LOA. Does anyone know what LOA stands for? Type in the chat box, please. Could you type in the chat box what LOA stands for? And I'm sure that Anastasia will be first. What is LOA? Anyone? Oh my God, no one? Come on. What is LOA? Come on, have your just guesses. Say something. It doesn't have to be exactly right. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Laugh out aloud. Mobina Masum letter. <laughs> Learning oriented assessment. Masaf Akhrilu, you made it. Masaf Akhrilu, you are absolutely right. Learning oriented assessment. Learning oriented assessment or learning for assessment or assessment for learning. But she sure. But yeah, learning or learner oriented assessments. Okay. So LOA learning oriented assessment. Uh, okay. Okay, teacher responsibility in learning oriented practice. They share success criteria with learners. So in the very first sessions of the course, your students should know what the expectations are. So share success criteria. I want you to like be, I don't know, punctual to hand in your work on time. I need you to, for example, do this and this like conduct some projects, anything that you have in your class, involve your students in discussion, engage learners in self and peer assessment. And remember, one thing I might have skipped, in testing, there's no self or peer assessment, but in assessment, not only the teacher, but also the students themselves and peers 
offer feedback and advice. Put learners in the feedback loop. Design assessment tasks as learning tasks. Announce multiple stages of, stages of completion for assignments. This is how it works in many educational centers in the world. I mean, university teachers, mostly university teachers, uh, they have several deadlines for the completion of a task. This is the first, this is the second deadline, the third de deadline. They might have some bonus points for early submissions. So if you submit at the end of June, you will have the full score. If it's the 15th of June, you will have the full score minus, I don't know, two, three, whatever. So you might have your own policies, but usually in assessment versus testing, you have some flexibility. Okay. And this feedback loop process, uh, does Mahsa or Anastasia want to share their ideas about feedback loop with us? Because I think Mahsa might have also been present at, at the um, conference. Currently, much of our event is assessment oriented, 80 points for class activity. Yes, yes, Anastasia, you're right. What is feedback loop? Any volunteers to tell us? I think it relates to every student's feedback, all, the, all of them together. Yeah. Oh, it's written. Yes, yes, Solmaz, yes. Yeah. So we can say it's based on group work. It is based on group work, yes. Feedback. It loop. happens. It happens when we use output as input, I think. More on that, Anastasia, please. Um, like, um, for example, um, we can use um, what the students produce, like their output, as a source for their input. Or um, we can give feedback on what they said as uh, as their output and use that as um, an input in our classrooms. I think that's what I that's all I can remember. Yeah, perfect. And Sherzi, you are absolutely right. Sherzi is also right. There's a circle, and like Anastasia said, you receive use your students' work. Students, um, I mean peer students. You know, classmates give feedback, you give feedback, then the work is uh, re actually written or reconstructed, given back to the teacher. It might be the final stage, or if you see anything needing improvement or needing correction, you could still continue with the feedback loop, give them some suggestions and get them to fix it. They bring it back to you. And here, the students themselves are very important to reflect on what they have done. Their peers are important in giving them feedback. And of course, goes without saying that before uh, you involve peers in, in assessment, you should, have, you should have that culture in your class. Everyone should know that constructive feedback is for the benefit of everyone. This shouldn't offend anyone no one should take it personally but if you think that your students are not ready for this kind of peer assessment forget about it because the negative impacts might be very severe so careful with it but yeah this is um feedback loop which you um talked very beautifully about anastasia and sherzi and sulmaz and feedback is a crucial part of assessment. I mean, I can't see how assessment can go without feedback and how feedback can go without assessment. They, they need to be together. And for that, Professor Farhadi calls it feedback literacy. I'm not sure that if, I'm not sure if this expression belongs to him, 
But anyhow, he used feedback literacy and I'm quoting him, um, which is how much feedback literacy do we have? And I, I think I've got some slide about feedback literacy, which I'm gonna share with you. Um, all right. So I think we finished with Professor Farhadi's slides and I've got uh, one slide only which belongs to me and that's the end of my session, just kidding. Um, I've got 35 slides, Sulmaz, and you're not gonna be able to watch Iran, Germany volleyball match. Sulmaz, is it gonna start in 45 minutes or 15 minutes? It starts at 12.30. 12.30, oh, we have ample five time. Oh yeah. my God, we have ample time, it's good. So I'm gonna use all my yeah, it's good. five slides, okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> once again, assessment is ongoing and it encompasses a wide domain uh, versus testing, which is not ongoing and it only encompasses a very narrow part. It includes all that a learner produces from a single word to a whole essay. It can be done by self, teacher, and peers. This is very important. So one distinctive feature of assessment that peers and selves are included in the whole thing. It is never ending and can be both incidental and intended. And thank you for annotating. So I think someone annotated my page, it must have been Sherzy. She is the no. Oh no! I actually I wanted to, but it was not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you wanted. To. Yeah, it's never ending. So it's uh, and can be both incidental and in and assessment for learning to collect data on student progress to measure learning and teaching to identify learners' strengths and weaknesses reflect on the teaching methodology, to provide the students with feedback, to help students realize their learning goals, to understand the effectiveness or appropriacy of the material. So unfortunately, because um, our, our courses and terms run for a rather short time of 15, 16 sessions, I don't think Realistically speaking, we have that much time to adjust our teaching and material to the students' needs. But ideally, in a teaching uh, environment, in a learning environment, assessment should enable us to fix our teaching ways uh, related to the students' needs, expectations, and also learner types. But how much is it possible uh, in some ways, it's possible in Iran Zamin, but in some ways, it may not be really that possible. It is possible if you look at it throughout uh, a course of six months, one year, two years. So if you've been a successful teacher with your students, um, and if your assessment has helped you, I mean, it's giving you an image of what you've been doing. But if you have problems in your classes, um, and your assessment has not been able to give you that image, maybe this assessment is not accurate. Because if you conducted your assessment accurately, you would know what is missing in your classes. Is it your strictness? Is it your teaching? Is it the material? Is it realizing your students' needs or, or maybe other things? Okay? So, um, you should understand the effectiveness of your teaching. And I'm quoting a friend or someone I, uh, I, I was talking to a couple of maybe days ago, weeks ago, I said, um, if your students fail, maybe it's the result of your bad teaching. So why are you penalizing your students when your teaching was faulty? Okay, so Students failing is not always about students themselves. Sometimes they tr they try, but I was not able to teach them. Solmaz, do you want to say something? I think here we can mention about dy dynamic assessment. Please about the students tell failing. us about it. Dynamic uh, assessment. 
Yeah, I think um, it refers to uh, the things they might be able to answer correctly. For example, in multiple choices, they, um, they just dismissed two of them and chose one of them. Okay. Between A and C, for example, one of them was wrong. At least that a student understood A is wrong. Good, very good, yeah. Very good, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, knowledge. Assessment should mirror learning. Yani, Allah, چه فرشایی وقتی به ذهنم میاد ولی خودم رو سانسور میکنم. یه استادایی داشتیم. یه سوالایی میداد که اصلا تدریس نشده بود. یعنی مثلا تو ریاضی مثلا یه وقتایی تو زیست شناسی یه وقتایی به همین گفتیم سوالا کد بعد یه فرهنگی تو بعضی وقتا تو مدارس بود تو دانشگاه ها شاید بود هر چقدر سوالا سخت بود استاد رو فکر میکردن استاد بالا والا مقامیه من نمیدونم مثلا از کجا سرچشمه میگرفت مثلا میگفتن طرف یه سوال میده اصلا سه روز هم فکر کنی نمیتونی جواب بدی بابا اون روانی اون یه سایکوپاته اون مشکل داره اون باید مثلا یه جایی ببرنش یعنی چی خب تو باید سوالی بدی که تدریس شده کار شده یا اسسمنتت باید چیزی باشه که اصلا منطقیه یعنی معقوله it's got to mirror learning assessment has got to <تصفيق> شاد داره دلش خواب خدا رو شد که دلت خونک میشه آره واقعا یعنی منم اگر این کارو کردم لعنت به من مثل اون پیره مرد شعار میداد مرگ بر آمریکا دیوید دیوید او اسا دیوید دیوید مثلا میتونی بگی مارک بعد من نمیدونم دیدید یا ندیدید ولی من خیلی لذت بردم از اون دیوید دیوید او اسا آره دیگه نه همش از او اسا میاد دیگه contribute to learning assessment should contribute to learning if assessment does not contribute to learning it's trash i mean uh, it's like concours okay concours is absolutely trash um, motivate learners and build confidence باز یادم میاد مدرسه به خصوص بچه دوره ما الان خدا رو شکر سناز بیما اینجا نیست بگیم مثلا ست سال پیش هم منظورم پنج سال پیش که من مدرسه میرفتم مچگیری بود رسما یعنی assessment و testing evaluation یعنی من میخوام بدونم تو کجا رو بلد نیستی که پدر تو در بیارم اصلا confidence building نیست توش در حالی که assessment has to motivate learners and build confidence So, implicitly, it's telling us to look at the positive side of their uh, efforts. Oh, you did this part right. Your presentation could need some improvement, but there were many, many positive parts, which you are wonderful. I really enjoyed your presentation. Include a variety of techniques, not just one, because there are different learner types. Allow all learners to experience success. Be contextualized and relevant. Take place over time. Assessment is ongoing. Alsan, yeki az zorkterin mozalat konkur, masala. Shizim az konkur. Aha, taraf unuz alish khub nist. Dokhtaray khub man ki alan tu injala se hastan khub moshkeli hamu dar ab period ro daran. Halish khub nist. Agas sardar dare nim dunam. مشکل داره سرما خورده و یعنی چی من همون روز کل سرنوشت زندگی مشخص میشه لعنت به این تعین سرنوشت بچه از همین جا فکر کنم تو دهن کنکور بزنیم بلنشیم حرکت کنیم سنت سازمان سنجش شما برید منم میام <تصفيق> خب یعنی یعنی چی خب خانم مشکل داره مثلا چی بگن مثلا کنکور یه جور طراحی بکنید که به مثلا زمانی که خانم پریودن نخوره مثلا چی مثلا چیز عجیب غریبی میشه یا مثلا آقا کسی ناراحته مثلا دم در بگه من فردا میام امتحان میدم آیا میشه ای کاش میشد اوه بریم به نشانه اعتراض شیشه های سازمان سنجش <تصفيق> بریم من موافقم مریم شما برید منم از این ور میام من میخوام شیش های سازمان سنجش اینجا رو برم بشکنم شما اونجا خب دیگه ننویسین دیگه چه اتفاقی من تموم کنم جلسه
آره قزل راست میگه مافیا بود واقعا مافیا واقعا میلیون میلیونی در میارن میلیاردی در میارن خب بچا بریم ببینیم که چی مونده از من مونده قطعا از جلسم ولی پنج دقیقه سعی کنم تمام کنم چون پرامیس وان اور رو داده بودم بچا فورمتیو اسسمنت خیلی هاتون میدونید یعنی یو یو اولریدی نو ابات فورمتیو ورسس سامتیو اسسمنت آی مین موست اف یو اولریدی نو بات فورمتیو از دی نیم سجستس یو ار گیوینگ انفورمیشن تو تو to to the test taker uh, to the student to the learner um it is classroom based it is ongoing and and all those things that you can see there i mean um ana khanum be khatibi be nishani etiraz bekonam dare harakat mikone already summative um on the other hand is that kind of testing which is usually at the end of the course this measures a construct may not contribute to the growth it's pass or fade and it's about selection so concord is usually a summative one and we should try to stay away as much as we can from summative assessment and formative uh, of course uh, is the best one so i guess i'm persistent to iran zamin assessment ya testing میگیم ما سعیمون اینو بیشتر assessment formative ya summative سعیمون اینو بیشتر زمان و زحمتمون رو بذاریم رو formative یعنی به زبان آموز مثلا بگیم که ببین تو مثلا در فلان ساختار ایراد داری تو در pronunciation مثلا فلان th مشکل داری روش کار کنیم summative یعنی اینکه نمره بده که تموم شد خداحافظ یه پنجره دادم به برو حالشو ببر تو هیچ وقت هیچ چی نمیشی ما این معلم شیمی داشتیم بچه ها زمان ما به مراتب بدتر بود زمان اکثر زمان شما ها خیلی بهتره سال سوم دبیرستان مدرس شیمی جلسه اول اومد تر کلاس گفت شما همه تون خرید و هیچ کدوم نمیتونید نمره بگیرید از شیمی مرتیکه از مدرس های مثلا معروف شهرم بود و فکر میکرد البته الان که فکر میکنم به نظرم مثلا داشته فکر میکرده که مثلا با این روش من نگیتیولی اینا رو مثلا اراوز بکنم یا نمیدونم حالا مثلا بهش موتیویشن بدن که ما به تو ثابت میکنیم که مرد حساب خب دیگه مثلا مگه میشه مریم واسلا میگه زمان ما حالا بعدیش اینه که این مدرس ها فاطمه حال تو میگیرم باش این مدرس ها معروف و محبوب بودن بچه ها یعنی الان الان مثلا تو جمع اون صوفی هست که دختر گلم مثلا 15-16 سالشه شاید واقعا اینشالله که ندیدن از سر همچین چیزها رو ولی ما این مدرس ریاضی داشتیم میگفت بوکس میخواب بزنمت آپرکات بزنم یا مثلا یه جور دیگه بزنم مثلا چون طرف مثلا حالا نمره کم آورده بود مثلا. یعنی نسل من و قبل منی ها واقعا اگر good for nothing هم باشیم به نظر من خیلی چیز نیست جنگ مگه مکتب با everybody فاطمه نرو من کار دارم با اوکی خب اورال خب باز یه اسم ترمینالوجی دیگه که تو assessment و testing داریم باز traditional و alternative داریم میبینید traditional رو اونها رو که نوشتم اونجا alternative ها رو هم میبینید یعنی در assessment دیگه شما کویز خیلی نمیدی ببین ابزرویشن داری از کاری که داره میکنه رو ابزرو میکنی اورال اینترویو داری اورال ریپروداکشن دارن زبان آموزا مثلا اورالی سامتین دی پرزنت پروجکت بهشون میدید پورتفولیو اسسمنت دارید یعنی هر نفر یه دفترچه‌ای داره که پیشرفتش در اون ثبت میشه سلف و پیر اسسمنت داریم در الटरनेटیو در واقع اسسمنت رایتینگ دارن بچه ها و اینها در واقع تعیین میکنن که یه نفر چقدر تلاش کرده ولی باز برمیگردم حرف دکتر بیژجندی که واقعا قضاوت بچه ها قضاوت و اسسمنت کار خداست یعنی ما با ابزاری که داریم واقعا واقعا سخته فقط اینجا یه دونه این فیدبک رو هم بگم بهتون و دیگه جلسه رو تنم کنیم این فیدبک سندیچه خیلی همون باش آشنا هستیم 
پس گفتیم فیدوک قسمت ایندیسپنسیبل و اینوتیبل در واقع ما اسسمنت ماست ما نمیتونیم اسسمنت رو از فیدوک جدا کنیم یا فیدوک رو از اسسمنت جدا کنیم حالا وقتی فیدوک میدیم باید یادمون بیاین ساندویچ چیز برگر بیاد که مثلا از ساندویچ زیبا تو بلوار میخریم یا از آقا میکایل میخریم ببین میگه begin with some positive comments regarding the situation in question اول با پوزیتیو um, you're so motivated I like your passion or I like your thinking before you want to say something there is acceptable level of accuracy in most of your sentences give praise for the person's strong points um, پس strong point رو ما اول میام این دو تا لایه اول و دوم لایه سوم حالا انتقاد میگم But I think you, you can improve your pronunciation of TH sounds. Your fluency is really good, except that when you are saying sentences, when you are producing sentences in which you have words with TH, I think the pronunciation can improve. But as دوباره بعد این انتقاد سری میره سراغ strong points و آخر هم میگه که مثلا این کتاب رو میخونی من هستم بقیه زبان آموزا هستن بقیه مدرس ها هستن میتونی کمک بگیری میتونی فلان لحظه ها به من پیام بدی و اینها این فیدبک سندویچ رو از نظرمون دور نکنیم بچه ها من تایممون تقریبا به پایان رسید خب چیزای زیادی هست که هنوز مونده ولی بخوام جملات پایانی رو بهتون بگم خوشحالم که در شهر کوچیکی زندگی میکنیم ولی فکرامون بسته نیست خدا رو شکر با همت همه شما و کمک همه شما همیشه سعی کردیم پاینیر باشیم و پلیز شرزی پلیز گو هد آقای خانی عزیز میخواستم بگم اکثر مطالبی که الان فرمودین شاید به درد اصداد عزیز بخوره تو چفتر هشت سورسی که میخواییم برای امتحان آماده بشین میتونه اینهایی که شما فرمودین هم اضافه بشه به اون چپتر اونجا راجع به فورمتیو و سامتیو اسسمنت خیلی مثال های خوبی آورده خواستم بله. فقط اینو بگم که اگه اساتید دوست داشته باشن میتونن که موضوعات امروز رو یه لینکی هم بدن به صفحه فصل 8 اون کتاب چرا به موقع بود این کامنت خیلی ممنونم ازت مریم شرزی بسیار عالی فصل 8 کتابی که دارید برای در واقع اینترویاتون آماده میکنید رومینا پرسیده که آیا میشه اسلایت ها رو شیر کرد بله ولی چون حجمش به لحاظ یه سری ویدیوهایی که من اصلا وقت نیست پخش کنم یکم حجمش زیاده مجبورم با وی ترانسفر بفرستم اونهایی که میخوان اسلایت رو داشته باشن لطفا ایمیل بزنن به ایمیل آموزشگاه همون iranzamin.l.sch@gmail.com که من در واقع اسلایت ها رو توسط وی ترانسفر براشون برسم بچه ها یک لحظه اگه دوربیناتون رو روشن کنید بتونیم ب... البته اگه بتونید اگه موقعیت شو دارید یه عکس دست جمعی بگیریم که احتمالا بتونیم مثلا قسمتی از پروفیشنال دیولپنت پروگراممون داشته باشیم یک بار دیگه تشکر میکنم از استاد ابراهیمی عزیز استاد خطیبی استاد کاوه استاد قاسملو خانم ها زهروی مهنا سارا شادمان استاد اسدی خانم فخریلو خانم صوفی رخشان خانم سعید بیاد خانم نگین ترابی استاد بیاد غزال بیاد خانم رویفر خانم محشاد اشرفی خانم معصوم زاده خانم فاطمه حسنی و فافا فائزی خاتمی در حد مقدوراتتون اگر دوربین رو روشن کنید دو تا عکس با هم بگیریم میگه ان میریم آماده میشیم برای مسابقه ایران و آلمان که ایران ان شاء الله خواهد به به آقای آیت الله دکتر آیت الله پشت دوربین خانم معصوم زاده پنهان شده بوده به به واقعا که صداتون بسته است خانم معصوم زاده ببینید کار دونا آره واقعا کار شما رو به خود دو... مرسی بچه ها مرسی که اومدید محشادم میبینم سلمازم میبینم شاید دلم تنگ شده براتون بچه ها این چه وضعشه دیگه باید بریم شیشه های زادوزنش رو بیاریم پایین چقدر پیر شدی نه خانی شما 
بوریا این دقیقه کامنتیه که زنجانی ها به هم میدن وقتی میرزن یا پی شدی یا چاق شدی به خانوم ها میگن چه هم شده یا چاق شدی خب. آقا من فکر کنم نزدیک هفته دشتاد بار فقط این ریزالت پول و پایین بالا کردم برای شما هم اینطوریه یا فقط برای من اینطوریه نمیدونم نه برای من اوکی بود خب بچه سارا شادمان هم اومد دیگه فکر کنم احسانی هم وای میستیم اگه دوربین دیگه باز شد شد نشد دیگه اکس سنپ شات من میگیرم جلسه هم ضبط شده ضبط شدهش رو بهتون از طریق میذارم احتمالا یوتیوب بذارم که بتونید برید اونجا ببینید زمنا بچه یه خبر جالب بهتون بگم ما پارسال که با پروفسور چامسکی و پروفسور کرشن میتینگ داشتیم فافام اومد اسم جلسه رو گذاشته بودیم The Event of the Century پروفسور کرشن و پروفسور چامسکی میت Event of the Century یه آقایی رفته تو مراکش هم دعوت کرده از این دو بزرگ و میتینگی وبیناری ترتیب داده دقیقا تایتل ما رو کپی کرده بود یعنی ایونت آف the سنچری و چون ایونت آف the سنچری یه عبارت خاصه من خیلی به حالت بازی بازی تو یوتیوب یه درخواست تیک داون فرستادم به یوتیوب و ویدیوشون رو آوردم پایین و همونجا گفتم دیوید دیوید او استا <تصفيق> یه همچین کارهایی هم ما بلدیم در هر صورت خب بچه ها آره آره اینجا باید ببین کارادون ها آره. آه. بچه ها خیلی ممنون از همتون دوستتون دارم مرسی که بودید اینشالله که همیشه اسسمنتمون بیشتر از تستینگمون باشه خب خانم فخریلو هم اومد بذار آه الان یه اکسی دیگه هم گرفتم که خانم فخریلو هم بودن مرسی از همتون امیدوارم بقیه ساعت های جمعتون خیلی خوش بگذره. از همه تون ممنونم از کانتریبیوشن های خیلی خوبتونم ممنونم و خدا نگه دارم خدا حافظ بودتون زنده باشین